You are so funny. You are so funny. I just stepped down the deck. You were sound asleep on the couch. I'm doing a quick garden tour, okay? Just on the deck. We'll, 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 I'll be with you soon, okay? Hi, everybody. It's Robbie from Southern California. And today, I am going to take a spin around the deck because, well, I really haven't done anything since the last time you saw it. So, but I am going to be doing some things. I've been working in my rainbow garden. I've been starting to think about my chair garden. Haven't worked on that yet. And moving totes around and deciding what I'm going to set up. So let's just look at all the wonderful things I did do and did not do last year. Remember those? I think I told you all last year. Oh, I'm moving them. They're going into the other garden. Well, guess what? They're still here. But I am going to be moving them. If you see them in two weeks, I'll come back in two weeks. Put underneath... Get those things moved because I don't want them there. Here is a bucket. I grew lettuce in there and zucchini last year. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to grow. I've got remnants of lettuce. Oh, this is lettuce. See, this is lettuce. That's a weed. And this is sow thistle. I've been leaving all the sow thistle for the goldfinches. They've been up here constantly. They've got babies. And if you look at the hills, they're kind of really brown. And they don't have enough food. So I leave that right now. Nothing new down here. So I'm not going to go through every single thing. It's not worth it. I want to waste your time. There's some green Swiss chard there. There's mint that I had growing in these soup containers, whatever they are. I'm going to get that out and separate the mint. More mint. Here's a moringa. Look at this. It stayed green all winter. Isn't that beautiful? Now it's going to go to flower. Absolutely gorgeous. And this is walking onions. It all has to be cleaned up obviously and here nothing walking onions and weeds so I'm going to do something in there and then this is dill that's been coming up so that's quite nice I like having dill how to wrap some of these in tools something was chewing on it see how I say just use a clothespin I just take a little bit of tool and I put you know wrap it around and put a clothespin on it the only reason this one's got two is because I didn't know where to put the clothespin but that works really good. I've got to freshen that up too. So really nothing new here except for here. I've got a little bit of garlic coming up. This is the garlic I got and it's kind of late now to grow. So some of the newer garlic I've been planting I've noticed is not growing as good as the garlic I grew a month ago. But that's okay. Even if it's small, I can leave it. It could stay dormant until fall and then start to grow. So we'll see. I marked this. There's your tote lid with the zucchini seeds that did not sprout and I put them in here just to see and they did not sprout so I'm thinking this batch is no good anymore and that's been put away for a few years so I'm going to have to really work more on newer zucchini and then that's the popolo I'm going to walk over here and show here's more popolo popolo here I'm going to take all the popolo I only want one plant I don't like poplo but Gary loves it it tastes kind of like cilantro but it's very strong the thing is poplo grows usually when cilantro won't and that's why a lot of people like it I'm going to cut this out probably today and what Gary's going to do is just take the whole stock and just stick it in his garden and whatever grows grows and he can deal with it that way I've got more that we're going to see in a second I'm going to give him all the poplo these are walking onions look how big they are isn't that gorgeous? You can take the whole thing out and use the whole thing. And these, for some reason, are not walking. Isn't that interesting? Oh, yes, they're starting. Here it is. This is the start. This is, so these are just later than the ones in the garden. Look at that. You see this, like, what is this coming up in the middle there? That's the start of the walking onion developing. And then it will move its way up until it bursts out of the top. It's really cool. Purple basil. This came up during the winter, and I've had purple basil all winter. So that's been really cool. I'm leaving that, and then red, red vein sorrel here. It's done beautiful in here, and this is just some seedlings coming up at tomatoes. Let's see. Haven't done anything in here that's just garlic chives. See, this is garlic chives all grown and mature, and this is new garlic chives, just seeds I threw in there that are starting to grow, but I want to redo all that. The sage. I'm either putting that in my pizza garden that I'm making, my vertical garden or Gary's going to take it but I think it's windy and cold today I think there's two plants in here see so what I'm going to do is take it to my pizza garden I'm going to see if I can bust it apart give one to Gary and take one that will help it and separate it again more garlic chives that's what it looks like looks like grass and there's walking onions in there this is parsley that went to seed I'm not sure how many seeds I'm going to have but I think there is yeah there is seeds there because of the birds have been coming in and getting it. 
then I've got in here garlic. I did plant this recently, the garlic. So I've got garlic and then I've got some elephant garlic. That's elephant garlic there. Then this is walking onion. So there's two elephant garlic in there. That's the mint from last year that's making a comeback. This is regular onions, just regular onion bulbs. They're not walking onions. Now some of them are flowering and they shouldn't be. They really shouldn't flower this year. And I think they might have gotten stressed by maybe it didn't stay damp enough and if it dries, I think sometimes onions will be forced to seed because they think they're dying. <laughs> and so they go to seed because normally these were baby onions, like little tiny plants. And usually they don't go to flower until the following year. So I think that's what happened to a few of them. So I got to keep this watered well. And this, this is my tricolored sage growing with two celery. I'm going to remove the celery out of here. I want to keep my tricolored sage alive and well. I took a cutting, the cup slipped, uh, split already. I'm going to put this in my pizza garden and then concentrate on that and it will grow much better without the celery. So I'm either going to chop the celery out or move it. Maybe I'll move one and chop the other one out. Like I said, I haven't done anything in here. Let's walk over here for a minute. See, Kitty left. She said, oh, she's just doing a garden tour. This is lettuce. And I sat this here just because I didn't know where to put it. And some, this is a, I put this on here so I don't poke myself, say. And this is a purple tree color. So I'm going to figure out where I want to put that. I'm not sure yet. Okay, let's step over here so you can see. Let me back up. Okay, this is some more popolo. So again, I'm just going to cut the stalks. I'm not going to pull it out. Just cut it. and let him take it all. See, here's one. This one grew all winter, very strange. This looks like it's parsley, and this again is garlic chives. I grab the seeds and just throw them everywhere. This is a Swiss chard. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it, because it's old. See how small the leaves are? You'll see how big it is underneath. It's huge. Oh, look at this. Tote lids, tote lids. Look at this, I made a strap. I, I'll have to show you how I make these things, but I made a circle out of it, I attached it, and then I made a stake like you would make, it's too hard to explain, and then I taped it on, and look at that, it's holding my poles, they're always falling all over the deck, now I've got a place to hold my poles, you know, we're going to have to get into everything you could do with tote lids, because I'm going crazy with tote lids, this is dazzling blue kale, and see in there, popolo, all the little ones that are in there, all the little green things, these, that's all popolo. So I'm going to have more popolo than I want. So I'm going to cut them out and let him take it. These are some tomato plants that are coming back from last year. More mint, more garlic chives, more walking onions, more tomato plants. And I think there was a parsley back there that the dogs chewed up. They like chewing on that stuff. And then here, this is oregano. And that's how I'm making all my oregano. See how tight that is? This has to really be separated. I can get multiple plants out of this. It's growing down here and here. So I've got to get that out. Stevia. This was one of them I brought last year here from the front yard. What I did this morning was I trimmed off all the flowers. Well, most of the flowers and the seed heads because see, here's a little bit of flowers left. Actually, they just opened since this morning because I really want the leaves to get bigger so I can make tea out of it. I've got mint on the deck here and I've got stevia. So I can just step out here grab some of the leaves and make my tea. I have no idea what all the dogs in the neighborhood are barking about. So something's going on, but oh well, I'm just gonna continue going. Anyways, this is gonna be fantastic to have. So I am trimming this, but I'm leaving some flowers. Like I'm leaving the sow thistle here and that until the goldfinches are done. And then I wanted to take the basil out. See, here's some more beautiful parsley. Well, whatever was happening, is all gone. <laughs> Uh, you know, it could have been somebody going by. Neighbors have llamas and stuff, and when the dogs see a llama, they think, oh my gosh, what in the world is it? Even though they've seen it a thousand times, and they will still do that. All the dogs in the neighborhood, it's like, this is bigger than us. Funny dogs. Anyways, I'm leaving the flowers on here because I have a certain bird that comes and feeds off this constantly. So right now I'm leaving it even though I'm going to grow a new basil, green basil, this year. And I'll explain why in a second. But there's a bird that needs this, so I'm leaving that. That is more red vein sorrel. This came up from seed. I had thrown some seeds in there last year, 
and they grew and I didn't know where to put them but I'm gonna put them around the bathtub next door and I think that would be really nice in pots and once they're separated see what happens when you overcrowd plants they don't grow they stay stunted and small and that's what they did but once they each have their own pot they'll get really really big so they'll get moved now oh you know what I wanted to show you let me see I think there's a little bit here see this I've showed you and let me put my hand here so you can see it better right there right there there you go I'm trying to make sure the camera gets in focus the goldfinches come and when they feed on the seed heads they want to make sure I, I don't know I think they want to make sure that they don't try to re-eat a seed that they ate so they stick it onto the branch not all of them but I've seen the males do that the females just eat and throw it but what was cool this morning while I was out here is there was clumps all over like there was more here and they were all over and then I came back and they were all gone so I thought well they maybe they blew off only to come back to find a hummingbird collecting all that and see the Christmas lights I, I used to turn them on sometimes I do at night for the hummingbirds if it's really cold in hopes that they'll find that little light bulb these are old ones so they are they're a little bit warm well the Christmas lights attracts I guess spiders and they make spider webs there the coolest thing this morning was standing here working on my stevia and above my head was a hummingbird collecting all the cobwebs the same hummingbird that's been hanging around here for a long time and where was she going let's see there's another another um, sage and then the same old same old stuff here there's a pepper it looks like it's making a comeback it's new growth so I'm gonna take care of that more walking onions and then this is just lettuce well I'll show you what she was doing okay she's not there right now if any of you saw the nest that I didn't know was there the other day and she had taken it apart and she was had her baby on the deck she rebuilt that this morning now she's been sitting on that off and on so she's thinking about setting up another nest this time I know she's there and that little thing underneath is where I usually hook another hummingbird feeder it's a little wire I just hook it on but I'm not going to do it now because she's got that one there so she can feed off of that I don't want to attract even though I know they nested in the kitchen window with the hummingbird feeder I don't want to attract all the birds to come bother her so I'm just going to leave it because she built it just like that this is the carrots this is amazing I don't know if you can see that can you see the carrots in there this is last year's carrots there is nothing better than storing vegetables in the ground where they belong those carrots are still good periodically I want a tiny carrot it's a little carrot that's the breed of carrot it is they're still good okay parsley this one needs trimming and taken care of I'll probably leave that I'll leave that I'm probably gonna pull the celery out it's struggling anyways I'll chop it out and just leave it and kind of take care of everything there there's more garlic chives more parsley this is just tobacco plant you don't really want that it's a weed just drop it and leave it it's actually toxic so you I mean it's you know we don't eat it people don't eat it but it's not the greatest thing to have and it came up just because seed blew in there this either I'm gonna lose it if I don't do something see it's mint try and make a comeback I should take all the dried part off and then move it into a bigger pot I'm not sure what type of mint this is more oregano I put there last year it was a little tiny plant took off and garlic chives and then here there's really nothing I haven't done anything in here this is all the pomegranate seeds I think I did a video last year and showed you how easy it is just throw them in there and they grow well you throw them in there and they grow these separate so easy do they separate you just pull them out they have I can well if I pull it my here look let me show you this is really how easy they grow there it is now if I plant this back in a pot they will grow they are hardy little things at this size I have hundreds of them and they are the easiest thing to separate believe you me I have done it more times than I've even could count in here I have some more parsley this one's growing in a cottage cheese container and it kind of went you know the roots went down more parsley there kind of laid tool around here so nothing would bother it here is some more parsley and this I've got to get off I noticed this this morning this is the only onion chives I've got on the property so I'm hoping there's some seeds in there and they matured enough for seeds even if oh yeah they're oh that's right flick it up back in there I'm gonna grab some of those later and put them somewhere in a pot so I know I've got onion chives because I don't have any onion chives it just so happens that's the only one I've got 
So that is basically it. What you see is what was left from last year. And we're still using it. I mean, we've been using the onions and using the parsley. The garlic, let me tell you something. You pick some of the leaves off the garlic and put it into whatever you're cooking, and it's fantastic. The long green leaves, this is onions, but the long green leaves off the garlic is so, so good. Here's another onion that's gonna walk. This is a walking onion. See how this is turning white down here? See how the top is green? This is hard. You can call this a pregnant onion. It's gonna walk and then this will travel all the way up until it bursts out of the top. Isn't that cool? And that's how walking onions are. A lot of you have asked, you know, why, where are they or why are they so expensive? It's the wrong time of the year really to buy walking onions. If you wait another month or two, they'll be all over the place by people that are growing them because they're walking now. I've seen some ridiculous prices, outrageous prices. They shouldn't be that much. So kind of hold back because you can buy walking onions really any time of the year. Wait till the price comes down and they will be all over. They're one of my favorite onions. My daughter absolutely loves them. They're her favorite. Why? Because you use the green part of the onion. You could use the white part of the onion. And if you don't pull the onion out, continue just to use the green onions and you can eat the baby onions if you don't want any more. They'll grow for years and years and years. That's what's so wonderful about it. And that's basically it. Oh, it warmed up a little bit. It was just about 60 degrees a little bit ago, but the sun just came out. Look at this. This is more dill. Dill is coming up. So hopefully in two weeks, it will look a little different. I'm not sure if I'm gonna to put tomatoes in here or where I'm gonna to put the tomatoes, but I'm thinking about it. Playing around with water features. There's my ball. I moved it. Let me see if this one will go on. Nope, it's not going on. Maybe there's no water in this one. There's a little water. It may not be getting as much sun as the other one. Oh, the sun is facing that way. And that's what's going on. Nope, I'm gonna to have to check it. Nope, oh, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. it just had a pump up. I had the, the thing facing the wrong way. See, that was facing the wrong way. It was facing towards me, but the sun is starting to go down now. So it's not going down, but it's lower in the sky. So that one works better there. Look at that, isn't that cool? We're gonna get into that. So easy to make. Hummingbirds love all this and they really love, look at this, all the food containers. Don't forget, if you got a nice food container, ice cream, cottage cheese, sour cream, doesn't matter. This is, um, this is from a coffee jar. That's just a kid's toy. You, this is another coffee jar. You can make all kinds of hummingbird feeders that the hummingbirds love and little ramekin you can, from fast food or whatever. Isn't that cute? This is heavy. And this is light. So it's kind of like whatever you want. So with that, I think I just wanted to kind of go over and show you what was going on. I collected some seeds. Now, I don't know how many are good in here because the goldfinches come in and they've been eating the, the basil. But there's enough in here to get a few going. That's all I need is one. This is oregano, but I think I've got enough. I might just stick it in a pot and see if it'll grow like well, I've done it before. It's really easy. Just put it in a pot like mint and it just sets root and it goes. But I'm setting up my pizza garden now. You'll see that in another video. That's a vertical garden with buckets. I guess that's it for now. Just wanted to show you that even though I didn't do anything really, I've got a lot still going all winter. Kitty, you wanna say goodbye? Kitty, kitty. Yep, say goodbye. She says, okay. You got no broccoli for me? We'll get broccoli. I have broccoli in the yard. We'll get some broccoli and bring you broccoli because there's no broccoli here. Something ate your broccoli. I know. We'll get you broccoli. We will. So with that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody. Okay, so the broccoli leaf was good, too. Yeah, that broccoli needs tool.